Equinix customers are among the most innovative and influential in the world. They are meeting the demands of rapid digital transformation across every industry and segment. We're bringing their unique stories of success to you. We call this digital leadership. Hello and welcome to the Equinix Digital Leaders Series. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of hosting Schneider Electric. Schneider Electric is on a mission to help the world be more sustainable. And with us is Zach Nimborker. It's great to see you again. It's been a while. Good to see you as well, Carl. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your role in the business. Yeah. So um, I lead a global technology services organization. Uh, we cater to all of internal Schneider Electric employees, 140,000 of them. Uh, we are spread across 700 locations, okay. over 100 plus countries. At Schneider, our purpose has always been to empower all to make most of our energy and resources, bridging progress and sustainability. We call this Life is On. And our mission is to be your digital partner for sustainability and efficiency. We have about 77% of our business currently is energy management. Mm -hmm. uh, remaining 23% is industrial automation. Uh, when we talk about energy management, we're talking about providing tools and software. So my team and I, we primarily focus on cloud, co-location, data centers, connectivity, digital workplace. So we've launched quite a few transformational programs within Schneider that I'm proud of, uh, especially with the contributions that we're providing toward the company. Mm -hmm. What are some of those that you're focused on right now? From an IT transformation perspective, we, we were looking to eliminate a lot of the tech that we have at uh, the legacy infrastructure that is sitting and consuming a lot of energy mm -hmm. uh, in the data center floors. Uh, so we're optimizing, consolidating a lot of our data centers uh, into more of cloud and colo space. Um, basically, we are not only lifting and shifting our infrastructure, but through that, we're decommissioning a lot of the legacy equipment that's been sitting uh, on our floor. So proud to say that our IT staff, we had a goal of 25% reduction by 2025, uh, achieved 5% year over year. Uh, we're exceeding that. That is fantastic. One of the things we articulate to customers all the time, because you're not alone, right? We all have our sustainability targets. Um, you know, we have a carbon neutral target uh, that we've defined by 2030. We are working to drive efficiency in the operations themselves where we can. Um, but one of the things that we do with our customers, obviously, is help them do the same thing, consolidate their infrastructures into purpose-built data centers that are running more efficiently by design. So is it possible to transform your, IT, your internal IT architectures um, and improve the performance of your stakeholders internally and be more sustainable and do all three at the same time? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, traditionally, if you think about optimizing infrastructure, people always go to infrastructure as a service, yes. right? So there are platform as a service, container as a service, there's many different as a service plays out there. For us, we've focused mainly on infrastructure as a service for the past few years, mm -hmm. but now my team and I are kind of working towards, okay, what is the next yeah. next evolution for our IT infrastructure internally? Uh, platforms as a service, as bare metal as a service yes. uh, with an Equinix, uh, that's one of the major initiatives that we're looking at. One of the things we're seeing in this environment of supply constraint, um, as you can imagine, customers who normally would physically deploy on our platform, which of course we love, um, are having a hard time themselves securing the gear to deploy. And so Equinix Metal plus Network Edge plus Fabric becomes a bundle of virtual colo where they can take advantage of, of capacity that we already have pre-deployed, turn up, understand the benefits to their enterprise, and then may or may not migrate physically um, later or keep the virtual instance. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of the OEM partners, you know, the lead times were six months. Now some of our OEM partners are projecting 12-month lead times wow. for simple products, network gear switching yeah. infrastructure you know one of the one of the areas that we spend a lot of time with our customers talking through is how can we help them um, rationalize where they have and how they've deployed their IT architectures and do so in purpose-built data centers where they has, has been designed to be more sustainable and be more efficient 
Um, and that is the number one area that most infrastructure organizations should start um, as far as where they can drive that sustainable future. Um, when you think about the work you're doing internally, how have you been able to capture some of the lessons learned and help your stakeholders like an Equinix and other providers out there operate more effectively? It always starts with a purpose. What What is a company trying to achieve mm -hmm. in terms of their IT transformation, digital transformation? For us, it was very simple. It was uh, about making IT uh, infrastructure modern mm -hmm. because of the legacy footprint that we have. Uh, that organically translated into reduction of the footprint, yeah. thus reducing the carbon footprint. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's all about methodically planning out well, what is it that you're after. Mm -hmm. For us, we wanted to shrink our footprint, make it even more optimal for our end users to use. And that's where I think we have a value add where Schneider could help other customers, yeah. including Equinix customers, uh, on coming out with these phased yeah. approach. These roadmaps. It's a roadmaps yeah. and yeah. phased approach. Any other advice you have for other CIOs out there that are trying to navigate their own transformation? I, I would say that uh, traditional infrastructure, traditional data centers, again, these are like 10, 15 years old equipment. Yeah. Uh, the technical debt that a lot of the CIOs are sitting on right now, they're not able to refresh everything yeah. that they need to in their existing data center. So you end up doing greenfield deployments. I think a lot of people have the nervousness about taking that step forward, uh, creating a greenfield environment, whether it's in the cloud or the colos, it's taking that first step. That's mm -hmm. where they're struggling with. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you that, you know, on the other side of the equation, once you've completed the transformation, once you've taken that step, there's organic savings that yeah. come with these type of uh, optimization uh, projects. Yeah. And it's not always about the cost savings, but we've seen organic uh, direct relationship in, in terms of modernizing IT infrastructure, uh, carrying a lot of the legacy cost. It goes away. One size does not fill all. Um, everybody is in a different place in their journey. Um, some are much some are not. And uh, I think uh, using internal IT as an example to present to our customers and your customers, um, there's a great value and benefit. Zach, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here and thank you for the investment and time. But more importantly, thank you for the partnership. Um, the insights, uh, the education, the transparency is not just helpful for us, but it's helpful for all of our other customers and partners. Um, so I truly, truly appreciate the time. Um, you know, we focused a lot of the time on sustainability because it's such a core focus for not just our industries, but your business as a whole. So thank you for bringing those insights today. That was excellent. Thank you.